spectrometry doesn't have to be a pain in the mass. Today, I'm going to break down the key things you need to know about mass spectrometry for your A-level chemistry exam. This builds on a lot of key terms about fundamental particles and subatomic particles, so make sure you check out those episodes before listening to this one to get up to speed. Uh, let's dive in. Um, so, the mass spectrometer is split into four stages, ionization, acceleration, ion drift, and detection. So let's go through each of those. Ionization, the first, this is the first step, and the main techniques are electrospray ionization and electron impact ionization. <clears throat> so, electron spray ionization is a gentler technique and prevents fragmentation. It's typically used for polymers and biological molecules like DNA. The sample is dissolved in a solvent and a high voltage is applied. The high voltage rips the proton off the solvent and attaches it to the sample molecules. The sample molecules are now positively charged ions. Ooh, exhilarating. Next, we have some ion we have ionization continued. Ooh, there's more. In electron impact ionization, the sample is first vaporized and then hit with electrons from an electron gun. It's all very intense, isn't it? The electrons knock off electrons from the molecule. The molecules are now positively charged ions. And this method often causes the sample to fragment. Okay, so that was electron impact ionization. But electrospray ionization is the gentler one. Okay, so remember those two types. Right, next we need to talk about acceleration. Molecules are accelerated to all have the same kinetic energy. From standard equations, the kinetic energy is equal to half of the mass multiplied by the velocity squared. So kinetic energy is often written as half mv squared. All the molecules have the same kinetic energy, so the speed is dependent on the mass of the molecule. Lighter particles move faster and are detected before heavier particles. Okay, the next stage, ion drift. The time of flight is given by distance divided by velocity. This leads to an equation for the time travel that depends on mass. Time equals distance times by the root of mass over 2 Ke. Lighter ions take less time as the time is dependent on the square root of the mass. Okay, now final stage is detection. The ions hit a negatively charged plate. This causes a current and the size of the current gives a measure of the number of molecules hitting the plate. This gives the abundance of the molecule. Okay, so that was a lot to take in. Let's see if you can remember some different components of what we just talked about. So, in acceleration, all molecules are accelerated so they have the same kinetic energy. So molecules of different masses will have different velocities. And which particles move faster? Lighter particles. Okay, what does electrospray do? Do you remember? So electrospray, it rips off protons from the solvent and attaches them to the sample molecules, okay? Electron impact requires the sample to be vaporized and it's hit with electrons, which knocks off electrons from the molecules, okay? So what are those four stages in mass spectrometry? Do you remember? It's ionization, acceleration, ion drift, and detection. Okay, let's move on to some analysis now. Once a sample has passed through the mass spectrometer, we can analyze the data to identify the molecule. Okay, um, we produce a spectrum, and on this spectrum, the x-axis is the mass charge ratio, and the y-axis is the percent abundance. Okay, so the main peak, the spectrum produces lots of peaks, but the most important one is the molecular ion peak. And this is the peak of the greatest mass charge ratio. And this represents the mass charge value of the molecule we are analyzing. The smaller peaks um, will cluster around the molecular ion peak. And these are from the same molecules, but with different isotopes in them. These isotopic molecules will have different masses and so different mass charge ratio values. Now, fragmentation, any smaller and significantly lighter peaks in the spectrum are because of fragmentation. Um, as molecules can fragment in the spectrometer. Okay, so on the spectrum produced by the spectrometer, what does the x-axis show? It's the mass charge ratio, and the y-axis, that was the percent abundance, okay? And do remember what causes the smaller and significantly lighter peaks? That's the process of fragmentation, okay? And those clusters around the molecular ion peak, what do they represent? 
Those are some isotopic molecules, okay? If you can't remember what isotopes are, the details of what makes isotopes, make sure you check out the revision episode on isotopes and mass numbers. Okay, next we need to move on to analysis to calculate. Once we have the mass, mass spectrum, we can calculate the relative atomic mass. Now, what does that mean? The relative atomic mass is the average weighted mass of an atom relative to carbon-12. The key word to look at here is average. This is because the value, is the value is calculated taking into account all of the isotopes and their relative abundances. We can use the spectrum to view all the different isotopes and their relative abundance. Isotopic mass is along the x-axis and abundance the y-axis. The calculation we need to do is isotopic of the total sum of isotopic abundance times by isotope mass number divided by the total sum of isotope abundance. Okay, so let's go through that again because it's a bit complicated. So, to in, let's say we have a mass spectrum of carbon and we find that carbon 13 has a percentage abundance of 1% and carbon 12 has an abundance of 99%. Quickly, we can determine the sum of abundances. So, as expected, the sum of each percentage will add up to 100%. We can then work out each isotope abundance um, multiplied by the isotope mass number and add them all together. So in this case, for carbon-13, that was 1%, so 13 times 1 is 30. Carbon-12 had a percentage abundance of 99%, so 12 times 99 is 1188. So we then add those together, which produces 1201. Finally, we calculate um, the relative atomic mass by doing that total sum, 1201, divided by 100, which gives us 12.01. So remember, that equation again is the total sum of isotope abundance times by isotope mass number, and we get that from the x-axis, and we divide that um, by the um, isotope abundance, okay? Um, so, do we remember why electrospray ionization is better than electron impact? It's because it prevents that fragmentation, okay? So let's talk about isotope abundance to finish. The abundance can be equated in many different units. If an isotope's abundance is given as a percentage, the calculation becomes a little bit easier. Um, so as long as we have considered all the isotopes, the sum of the percentages must add up to 100%, okay? So isotopic values on a mass spectrum, do you know which axis do we get the isotopic mass from? That's the x-axis, and isotopic abundance is from the y-axis, okay? And isotopes, remember, they have a different mass number, so any isotopic molecules will have a slightly different mass-to-charge ratio, okay? So what was the most imp important peak on the mass spectrum? It's that molecular ion peak. That's the money shot, that's the one we want, that's the cool one, okay? Molecular ion peak, and that's what we can use to calculate the relative atomic mass. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of this episode. I hope it was useful. There was a lot to cover, so maybe listen to it again a few times um, to get everything consolidated. Good luck with all of your A-level revision and good luck for your exams. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.